Pi. I'm really happy to announce the launch of Alan Bits version 0.1. We've completely refactored the code. Uh, we've updated the GUI. We released it, uh, I think we started the project in December last year and then released in like January, like a minimal viable product just so people kind of experiment with it and um, give some feedback and that was great. And now uh, we've taken that and we've improved it and come out with a, a, a stable version. Um, I'm not a developer, I'm a hobbyist, so I had the initial idea for Alan Bits, but it was complete spaghetti code in the back end, and it took some real developers to come in and kind of sort it out and clean it out, and now we have something which is which is stable. Uh, so that, just to kind of give you an idea of Alan Bits, if you haven't used it before, the, it's just a solution to a whole bunch of little problems which I had when I was trying to develop on Lightning. One of the problems being with my ATM, for example, you know, I... If that ATM is going to pull funds, I don't want it to have access to all the funds on my node, on my you know well, wallet, on my custodian solution, whatever. So I just wanted the ability to be able to split funds into lots of little wallets and each one to have their own API key. So we started there, a very simple wallet where um, you could generate a new wallet and each wallet would have its own API keys. Um, another useful thing is uh, when you go to events and you want to give people the lightning experience to kind of have a QR code, scan it, and then you have like an Insta wallet on your phone, which you can use through a web browser, and you can like use the camera on your phone to actually scan and pay for things with via lightning. So we wanted something for that as well. Um, and then I also, because I'd made the Sinclair FOSS and lots of people have said to me they wanted me to like the release the code, uh, but again, it was spaghetti code in the back end. Uh, and a lot of the work for the Sinclair FOSS, it was just, you know, building the basic functionality to be able to send send and receive lightning payments. So I thought that should really already exist, which is something which you could put in a, you know, a stack in your development tools and then develop on top of. So that was that idea as well. So you kind of pull all that together and we came up with this basic wallet wrapper, which you could put on any lightning funding source. So it will sit on LND, C Lightning, OpenNode, LMPay, whatever, LNC Xbox, and then um, uh, it will add like this extra functionality being able to split your funds up. Um, and then we thought, well, well, let's add the things like the LNURL support. Um, I'm a big fan of LNURL and I wanted to experiment with it, but let's add that support via extensions. And then people can choose to add that functionality or, or not add that functionality, kind of like a WordPress scenario. If you want additional functionality, you enable it by these, these plugins, these extensions. Um, so we've got a couple of extensions working now, which are really quite nice. We've got a, an LNURL withdrawal one, so you can make LNURL withdrawal links. Got a paywall one, um, and we've got a point of sale one, which was uh, helped contributed by um, contributed to by uh, Tiago. Um, uh, so that was great to kind of pull in another developer just for that extension. Um, and we also developed Alan Bits, so it is easy to build your own extensions, um, and, and then for other developers to contribute and build their own extensions. So well, that was very important. So yeah, so we're really happy, um, really proud of it. Uh, we'll have a little look through now, look through the GitHub, and then I'll show you some of the functionality. So here's the uh, LMBits GitHub, free and open source Lightning Network wallet account system. It's quite hard to summarize LMBits, but I think that kind of summarizes as best it can. Um, it's a, a, a wallet account system. It's like a, a Lightning wallet management system, almost. So what can it do? Uh, it can mitigate the risk of exposing um, applications to your full balance by splitting your funds across multiple wallets if you're developing, or even if you're just a user and you just don't want to have all your funds on one wallet. Um, it's extendable through its extensions framework, so we can add extra functionality through extensions. Um, it can be part of a development stack. So, say if you've got a, if you're developing a computer game and you, you need something to be able to create um, Lightning wallets for your users, and then you know an API to be able to send and receive funds, and then maybe an API to be able to pull out, you know, do withdrawals through an LNURL system, for example. Then you can just use LNBits API, um, and it takes out you know that heavy lifting of development. Uh, it's a fallback wallet for an LNURL scheme. So this is a really cool feature. Um, LNURL has a fallback scheme. So say if, I've, if you have you know, what we would call a, a faucet, like an LNURL withdrawal link, and you scan it and you get funds onto your wallet, this gives the ability, so if a, a no-coiner comes along and scans that um, LNURL, then if they just scan it with a regular normal QR code scanner, they'll get a link. When they hit that link, it will make on the fly an LNBits wallet so, you know, for the user, they just scan the QR code and then boom, they have an Alan Bits wallet suddenly on their phone. Uh, so, so that's pretty sweet ability for you to be able to add that prefix onto Alan URLs. 
Um, instant wallet for LN demonstrations. So if you're doing, you know, for conferences and meetups, it's pretty nice. Like in Chaos Communication Congress, we had like little, it wasn't this project, but it's another project. We had some QR codes and then people could scan them. They kind of get an instant wallet with some basic functionality, like they could use the camera on the phone. Um, so that was, you know, one of the things we wanted Alan Bits to do from the get-go. Um, so yeah, as an account system, uh, there we are. I mean, this is, we'll have a good look at it in a moment, the actual application in a moment. Um, here's the API stuff. Uh, some stuff about the fallback scheme, the LNUR fallback scheme and the Insta wallet functionality. And then how to install it locally. And that's the most important part. Like LNBits.com is more an example of what you can do. We don't really want people using it and leaving their funds on there. You know, if someone else wants to run LNBits, um, in a way where um, people can, you know, leave funds on there and, and they, feel, they, feel, they feel happy doing that, then that's fine. But really, we designed it for people to, to run locally. Um, so, and it really is just like four lines of code, you know. Um, obviously, you've got to install Pipen, but once you've done that, you know, you, you clone the GitHub and then there's some variables you need to change in one file on LMBits for depending on the payment source you're using. And then you, you, you pip env into the shell environment and then you install its dependencies, um, of which there are very few. We kept them kept it very light. Um, and then you run Flask Migrate that builds the databases and then Flask Run um, that actually, you know, runs the Flask server and you have your server running on your on your computer. So pretty cool. Um, and that's pretty much it for the GitHub, I think. I mean, well, let's have a little look at the folder structure. We have our license there. It's MIT license. So do what you want with it. Um, if we go into LM bits here, we can see it's all pretty straightforward. It's a pretty simple file and folder structure. All the codes there for you to verify. Um, Eniko, who's uh, you know the lead dev, he's done a fantastic job of refactoring the code, so it's it's really clean. Um, so you know it's it's very auditable. Uh, it's not too complicated to kind of have to sift through and look through. Unlike my code, which was complete spaghetti mess. <laughs> if we go to wallets here, we can see the different funding sources. Um, and if we open one of those up, like C Lightning, for example. Then all the only functionality we need is creating invoices, paying invoices, and then checking if those things have happened. Um, so using those as examples, it would be very easy to like, I don't know, plug in another funding source like Eclair. I need to do one for Eclair at some point. If someone wants to contribute that, fantastic. That'd be great. Um, da -da -da, let's have a, look, have a look what we got. So we got our extensions. If we click on the extensions folder, each one of these extensions, uh, adding that, you know, extended functionality is its own folder in its own right. Flask has this really neat feature called Blueprints, which makes it very easy to kind of build extensions into, into your application, um, which we've taken full advantage of. And that's pretty much it, I would say. I mean, it's, it's, it's only the three of us who've kind of worked on this. I started it off and then Fiat Jeff and Eniko came in and they cleaned it all up. And then Eniko's taken it forward. Um, and uh, he's, he's, he's done a very good job of also like teaching me how to code properly, so. <laughs> Um, so I can actually contribute something meaningful to the project. So that's pretty cool. Um, no, but it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, I've got, I owe those guys a, a, a great debt of gratitude. So let's have a look at the application, shall we? So this is um, your wallet, your Alan Bits wallet. Uh, I mean, building, generating a wallet is just a case of going to your server, you know, your Alan Bits server, or either just going to alanbits.com and then, you know, just, there we are. And then boom, you've got a wallet. That was easy. And it has its API info here. Um, and we can add additional wallets if we really want to. It's really simple, as I said. And then each one of these wallets has its own API keys. Um, so, you know, I can plug devices into it and they're, they're, they're air gapped from each other. Uh, and this is, you know, this can be done via its API. So that's some functionality which developers could really take use of is being able to make wallets for their users. Um, let's have a look at this one because it's got funds on it. Um, all tables in Alan Bits have the ability to export to CSV, and that's really useful for, you know, I mean, I know some cafes and bars which use, uh, take Lightning payments, and the ones who've done a large amount of Bitcoin payments over Lightning, they actually need in information for their taxes. And, um, and it's an unpopular um, subject with Bitcoiners, but, you know, this data is actually important. And being able to export to CSV means you can import, you know, you can open your Excel document and do all your funky Excel stuff, putting it into QuickBooks, whatever. Um, there's also a chart system. So you can click on this chart system and you can, and it, it builds a nice chart, um, uh, uh, which is useful. It's nice to kind of see a visual of your payments ins and outs. I mean, I haven't used this wallet, so it's, 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's clearly, I mean, this is just one I, I used. I can't remember what I used it for. I think it was a, a conference. Yeah, I think it was Advancing Bitcoin. I used it in. Um, uh, yeah, it was Advancing Bitcoin. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I that's that's pretty much it for the, the wallet side of things. The next thing is to look at the extensions, I guess. So if we click on Manage Extensions here, we have a whole bunch of extensions, you know, five extensions we can access. Um, there is another extension for people running it locally, which is a faucet milking extension, but it's quite um, resource heavy. So that's something which, you know, you would run just for yourself. You know, if you're running LM bits, you can use it to milk LNURL faucets. Um, right, so what have we got? So we've got uh, TPOS, it's a great extension. This is the one contributed, by, contributed to by uh, Tiago. Um, again, all the API documentations there. If you want to just use the API version, but if you want to use the GUI version, you can. We can make a, a point of sale, um, select the currency, and then open it. And then this is a point of sale. Then which you can. This is actually a shareable um, point of sale, which you can. If I bring it, drag it over here. That's how it kind of looks on a phone. Uh, it's a shareable point of sale, which you can actually. Um, uh, share with your colleagues and it's completely air gap from the wallet it's attached to so you can receive funds on here and like you know it's not this this device this this um pos can't access your wallet details all it can do is generate invoices which is pretty cool um so what else have we got we've got a paywall so we can make paywalls uh i mean i've got um tutorials for all these things so it's, maybe it's best to check out the tutorials for the different extensions but we can make a paywall on here and paywall content and then you're else you can make uh withdrawal links so we have a bunch of withdrawal links here so here's here's one so um let's shall I, shall I open this one up and then see if okay so this is this is this is sort of a shareable link you can give out to people um but there's also the ability to just kind of click on this thing here um and then you know uh anyone watching this video you know grab your wallets and, and milk this milk this faucet i'll leave it up um until it's until it's empty uh, Diagon Alley. This is this is kind of a concept of mine for a decentralized marketplace. Um, if we go back here, there's a little descriptor on here. Movable nominous market stands. So it's almost like a market stall, and then you allow front end markets or indexes, as I call them, to index your products. Okay, so your products just the the details of your products just stay on LM bits, and they just in, they just do a post request to get the information, and then they display it on their searchable market, and then all payments go directly to you. Um, so the marketplace isn't holding any funds, the index isn't holding any funds. It's just the um, the merchant who's, who's, who's receiving funds uh, and communicating with the, you know, through a proton mail or whatever, communicating to the, the buyer. Um, it just means that, you know, that one of the weak points of markets, of, of you know, so even dark, dark markets would be that um, you can take a dark market down, it causes a lot of merchants, a lot of issues, whereas this system, for the merchant, it doesn't really cause a merchant any issues if the market, the front end gets the index that gets taken down, another indexer just pops up and they just point their products at that indexer. So it's a little bit, you know, maybe complicated to kind of get your head around, but there's a, um, uh, it's just kind of an example that if you have like some fringe experiment you want to do, then it's pretty easy to build an extension on LM bits and then share it with other people and see if they can contribute to it as well. Um, but again, I have got a tutorial for, for this thing. Um, so you can, you can check that out and, and maybe get a better understanding of how it works and then build your own as well. So we have some information here on the different frameworks we use and then some of the information extensions can access. Um, and I would say, I mean, that is pretty much it. Um, I mean, there's the LNUL fallback scheme thing, which I won't do now because, um, uh, yeah, I've just, <laughs> I haven't got the endpoint to hand to, to show you, but you can check that out. Um, it's in the GitHub. Um, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's a, it's a, a really clean product. Uh, it's useful, uh, useful for developers, useful for users. Even if you just, you know, you're running your own node and you just want some functionality, this thing looks great on your phone. You know, you can run LM bits and then you can access LM bits on your phone to send and receive payments. And then you can, you can do that thing where you're mitigating risk by not exposing funds, too many funds uh, by having separate accounts. Um, and then play around with the extensions. We hope to have more extensions regularly. I mean, this is just me and Aniko and then Tiago helping out as well, um, building these extensions. Uh, but we have, um, Aniko actually made the LNURL Python library. So we should be adding support for LNURL pay soon enough. Um, 
and then uh, a bunch of other extensions as well. There's also a tutorial on building an extension, uh, so check that out if you're interested in building an extension. Um, any um, issues or you want to chat to us, hit us on GitHub. Um, there's also a Mattermost. Um, if you go to the Fulmo Mattermost, uh, there's a channel on there called LM Bits where you know we can just sort of chat uh, in an informal way and you know less formally than, than GitHub. But I mean, you know, reach out, chat to us. Even if you're a noob, you don't know what you're doing, you just want to give it a go and have a go at building an extension and, and contributing, then you know, feel free. Great, that's what it's about. That's what it's for. There for, and we'd love to support you. Um, so yeah, thanks for thanks for watching, and then I hope you enjoy playing around with Alan Bits, and it's useful for you.